Well, uh, we're making a slider. Since the individual's from Canada, we'll call this Cans slider. Call it Can. Well, I'm going to go over the whole process to make it and show it to you and give you a little history too. This is an invention called uh, Kettle Well Frictionless Mouthpiece Slider or Kettle Well Frictionless Slider. And I put just a teeny bit of that Hetman's Light Bearing and Linkage Lubricant 13, which is a super high grade lubricant. You don't have to use a lubricant, but I do. And what it does is that your lips rest <clears throat> on the slider, not on the heart. And the slider goes back and forth. And it makes a little different sound, listen. the note very precisely versus it's just it's different it is every bit as sensitive to air because it fits within one ten thousandth of an inch mm. The first prototype was made of aluminum. No, second prototype. The first one in Holland. Uh, that didn't work very well. The one in California, he put, it was metal. It was aluminum cut on a CNC. And he had ball bearings at the four corners here and a piece of Delrin on the aluminum. And it <clears throat> slid back and forth with those bearings. And I told him I thought it was a good design, but was over designed. I said it's got to be a simpler way and then eventually after other failures of design I just made this myself. Out of this. It's the same material I'm using to make those resonant covers. Aged acrylic Lexan. Isn't that pretty? It's like a jewel. Uh-huh. So this will turn into that. How? <clears throat> By hand. Pretend that you seal this whole thing with clear tape. Okay? Now dust can't get in. Take off the slide. So you have a mold, like a shape. <clears throat> Take a Dremel tool stone that spins fast this way. I cut a shape in there that's darn close to where it's going to go. Understanding that it just barely is going to touch the edges of the covers so that it doesn't wiggle around too much. Okay? So then we have that. Then I put progressively finer sandpapers over top of this. I'll give you an example, okay? Pretend that that's sandpaper. Okay, like that. This was the same method 500 years or 2,000 years ago. And what you do is you grind a channel in the bottom of that that looks like that. And by the time I'm done, I take that tape off. I do a final sanding with a super high grade fine sandpaper and it makes it like glass on the other side. Uh -huh. Then I shape the outside with a bench grinder. Shh, shh. It's all by hand. And, and kind of camber the edges here and camber the edges here. I drill by hand. I don't use a press tool. I have a drill press. I've never, it's not a good thing to use on this. And <clears throat> so I drill a hole. 
I make eight holes, a teeny one, bigger, 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 bigger. And then the edges are a little sharp, you see, and so to the tongue. So the edge has to be smooth, and I use a Dremel with a conical tool. And go all the way around. And I go all the way around here, too, so it doesn't go click, click, click when it slides on the holes. Okay? See how quiet that is? And then I smooth that edge on the underside again so it doesn't click, and then smooth this and this. Then I need to put a little bit of a texture into this so it doesn't slip on the lip. And the lines run this way, so it grips the lip just a little bit. Uh -huh. Now, it's an interesting thing. I didn't realize this when I first invented it. But we spend a lot of time reshaping our mouth when we play it, you know, with a slider. The lip is in a stable position. And it doesn't really go anywhere. It doesn't have to do anything. Okay. That is the work ahead. And this little jewel, this little thingy here, is going to turn into this. Except this one was green. Okay. And this one will be blue. Very light blue. Very teeny bit. I love these chunks of this material. I, I don't know. It's almost like playing with crystal, and boy, they are hard. And it's totally stable. They don't break if you drop them. By the way, some of the early designs, like that one with the ball bearings, we even drilled side cuts in the mouthpiece so that it would clip on. But the ones I make, they can come off so you can play like a normal harp. There's no modification to the harmonica at all. But I like that because you might want to play it without it. The mouth, the harp stays clean because you don't have mouth goop dripping into the harp all the time with the slider. So it stays clean. <clears throat> you can slide to new note hole positions without messing around changing your arm shirt. And I like the clip of the note. Precise as it cuts the note. Why? It's, 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 it's a thing against the hole, cutting. It cuts the air very precisely at the beginning and the end. I kind of like that. It's a little more precise way of playing. Some, I mean, there's a different sound to your lip, I think, on the start of the note. But I mean, I noticed that, but I don't know everybody would understand, though, that I shape every single note I play with a tongue tap to start it. Instead of uh, that's just diaphragm. I don't do that. I control the air with my tongue so I can start that note with just a little bit of crispness. So precision a lot like an orchestral instrument. This is the work ahead. It's going to take some time. And then after it's shaped completely, then it will sit for three days as the molecules come into a new relationship with each other. Because what was a, a block is no longer a block. Now it's a shape like this. And it will change in its shape principally by opening up a little bit. And um, so then it will be resanded on the underside just a teeny bit. Not much. I take off 1.5 ten thousandths. Very little, but I notice a difference. You can't be totally airtight to the heart. That is the story of this slider.